Hello everyone, and welcome to Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torna, The Golden Country, the DLC story expansion for one of my favorite games of last year, and honestly, calling this just DLC is kind of rude. There is so much content in this new game, guys, that we might as well call it Xenoblade 2.5, but if you've never played the base game and are afraid of being spoiled or not understanding the story, don't be. You can play Torna, The Golden Country, or Xenoblade 2 first. The ordering doesn't matter. There are some characters that appear in both stories, but largely, this is very new player friendly. So, with that being said, let's jump in and see what all rest was like 500 years ago. The year was 3564. The 107th Indoline Praetor, Rodalis, had sent an armed expedition against the country of Sia. Its capital, Amranta, fell overnight and sank beneath the clouds, along with the rest of the Titan. The destruction of Sia shocked all the nations of all rest. Officially, the act was attributed to a military alliance led chiefly by Indol and the emerging power of Mor Ardain. In fact, it had been the work of one blade, the Aegis, a man known as Malos. Said to be the architect's word incarnate. Back then, neither Laura nor myself knew how closely his fate would prove to be tied with ours in the days to come. You're that eager to die? Then allow me to assist! Caught up in it. Laura, can you smell it? Oh. Oh, it stinks like. Uh. Yeah, no doubt about it. Blood. It's driving them crazy. Here we go, our first battle of the game against some crazed beasts, and this is where we're gonna learn about combat in Torna. Now, this is your first Xenoblade game. Xenoblade Chronicles functions in a real-time action RPG mode, meaning all of our attacks happen in real time and our enemies attack us in real time as well. Now, there are two ways of dealing damage, with auto attacks, which happen automatically, and also the arts. Arts are built up with our auto attacks, and when we have access to them, that's how you deal massive damage. So let's use Path of Thorns, cancel it to do even more damage, and severely hurt our foe. Now, oh my gosh, I love this battle theme, but I gotta focus. All right, so this is how we're going to be battling a majority of our foes in Torna, the Golden Country. However, because this is a DLC expansion, Monolith Soft decided to expand the gameplay even further, as we're gonna get into another battle I can start explaining. So. In Torna, you have a Vanguard and the Rear Guard. 
Your party consists of two people always in this game, which means you have access to double the arts and double the fighting styles. On top of that, there is an advantage to switching to a different character. You see the red gauge up near our HP bar? This amount of HP gets healed when we switch out, which means you want to switch often because if your HP hits zero, you're dead. I don't think I need to explain that to anybody. So once the gauge in the bottom left hand part of the screen fills up, we can switch to Jin and not only activate a switching art, but get access to his moves as well, which are always off cooldown when the battle starts. And god dang, guys, I am such a fan of the old Xenoblade combat system. I didn't know how it was going to feel when they switched it up, but god dang, they knocked it out of the park. Because it's just so fluid and amazing. We can get, oh my gosh, it's so stinking fun, guys. We can go back to Laura. We can use specials from both Blade and Driver. It is such a fluid system of cooperation. I love it. Game's gonna tell us to use specials. We're getting it out a bit. Basically, when you use your arts, you can also press the A button to get access to a special attack, which does even more damage than your standard arts. So, combining all these things together, you have one heck of a killing machine. Just goddamn, guys. I am so pumped up for this. Let's use our level two, which actually uses both Laura and Jin's weapons at the same time. Switch back to Jin. Holy crud, guys. This is. I'm not supposed to be doing the tutorial, but I just love this so much. The tutorial is also going to tell us it's going to activate a level 4 for us automatically, which do the highest amount of damage possible at this stage of the game. So let's activate it and see what Laura and Jin can do together. Thank you, Jin. Well, we've got room for improvement. Of what? This fighting style. It magnifies our strength, sure, but it leaves us wide open. When the sword is in my hand, you're left defenseless. What, you won't keep me safe? Huh? I'll keep you safe, always. I'll keep you safe, always. You... you still remember that? I've thought about it. Every day for these 17 years. I'll never forget it. The day you set me free from a life of misery. I see. After that brief exchange, we're now set free into the world of all rest, and we're going to get some information on how to actually navigate. Here displays the environmental area. Here's a little mini-map in case you get lost, and our current objective is displayed with the ZR button. Also, thankfully, Monolithsoft decided to add all the tutorials into a little main menu, so you can see all the tips in case you miss something. Thank you for adding that, because, well, I'll be honest, there's a lot to this game, but... Don't worry, we're all going to take it one step at a time and figure it out as we go. Now, in Xenoblade games, there is something called a landmark, which has multiple purposes. Every time you discover one of these, not only will it help you if you get, you know, lost. You can teleport to these areas using fast travel, but if you get knocked out in battle, you'll appear at the last one you visited. So, it kind of saves your progress in a way, but oh gosh, here we go. We got to uh, get into another battle. There's a lot I want to discuss about the world building and... How exactly Jin and Laura kind of look similar age, but Jin apparently met her 17 years ago. I'm just going to hope the story explains that for me because I want to talk more about the combat of this game. So, in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, there is something called the cancel attack. And basically, every time you use an auto attack, you want to follow it up with an art. If you can, sometimes you can't, you just don't have any available, but that is called canceling. Canceling enhances your chances to get a special going. And specials 
are kind of the best way of dealing out damage in this game. And oh my gosh, we got a new art because we leveled up. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about Hungry Snake next. Never mind, I wanted to talk about that, but the enemy kind of just ran out of HP. Sorry, buddy. So, uh, just like that. Oh. We're gonna get into another fight, so I guess I can talk about this thing. So, Hungry Snake is a multi purpose art. So, when you look at our arts, and right under the names, it says exactly what they do. For Path of Thorns, if we cancel it properly, <laughs> like I did not do, we'll get bonus damage. With Hungry Snake, not only does it apply the break effect, or at least has a chance to apply it, didn't do it this time, but it also creates an HP potion which heals us up, and oh my gosh. I already got a rare! Holy crud! That uh, owl's pretty nice to me, it dropped some equipment for us, so... That's something to keep in mind with your arts. You really want to use their secondary effects and keep those in mind. But uh, moving forward, we got a Blazing Braid. Oh, crud. This actually wasn't present in the original game. Our drivers can actually hold weapons. That is surprising, but uh, I don't think, yeah, they didn't change too much. So that's nice, I guess. But we'll discuss all the differences between drivers and blades a little bit later. I don't want to overwhelm you guys with menus and all that stuff. So let's hopefully show off what I was trying to do in the previous battle, but sadly we didn't get the break. So another aspect of combat in this game are called driver combos. Now to do these, we want to basically first get the break off with Hungry Snake. And then if Jin, yeah, Jin can then topple. So when you switch from a driver to a blade, you can get another effect. Jin's is topple, which if you topple an opponent, you deal substantially more damage. This is part of what's called the driver combo. Oh my god, we got a legendary rigid vest. Holy crap, okay. That is pretty nice. The uh, <laughs> rarities in those, I'm not sure if they matter too much, but that is definitely going to be a good boost to my HP bar. But uh, I don't want to get in too many more battles. Let's just... Head over here and see what we can't find. I uh, don't think we actually know our objective. We're kind of just exploring this area for the most part, but uh, we're almost at our waypoint. It's really hard to get lost in these games, in my opinion. It's usually a pretty straight shot to where you need to go. What happened? Are you alone? Looks like the only survivor. These burn patterns don't look like Malice's handiwork. Must have been humans. Looting and pillaging while the world burns. Hey, it's okay. Would you like to come with us? You don't have to worry, really. We're all good people. Promise. Can you walk? You can. Good going. And your family? Were they there with you? Should we go back and... Mikhail. Hmm? My name is Mikhail. Oh, right. I'm Laura. And he's... I don't have a family. I was sold to this village from Estem. So, I'm all alone. I see. Right then. Starting today, we're going to be your new family. We'll take you back to our friends and... You people? You're strangers. You don't have to pretend to care. Uh... uh <laughs> you don't beat around the bush, do you? He's gonna be a handful, this one. Though really... I was just the same once. Very well. Friends first, then. Not family. How's that sound? Laura. Hmm? What's up? I'll scout the area. Look after him. Oh, of course. Be careful. And Jin. I know.
What was that you said, Baldrick? The sea and capital of Omrantha has fallen. Or rather, it was annihilated. Praetor Redalus. So it has come to pass after all. Respectfully, you aren't much of an actor, Eminence. It appears you are not surprised at all. We heard disturbing rumors circling among the Magisters. Amalthus, whom you recently elevated to Quester? People wonder if this calamity has anything to do with that man's blade. With such extraordinary power, is it really wise to, uh... No matter whose power affected it, it is sure to serve the greater glory of Indal. The Architect will surely be pleased. Eminence, do you believe it can be controlled? If it cannot, I will let him take the blame. I have... spoken. Thank you for your report, Magister Baldrick. You may return to your duties. Hmm. Well, that was ominous. Anyway, this looks like a good spot to set up camp. Yeah, I'll start preparing the food. Oh, wow, you're a star, Jin. What do you reckon you'll make? Let's see now. I should be able to get my hands on a few choice ingredients around here. If we can find some torn and trout, deviled onions, and sour avocados, I could stew them together. Uh, you like trout stralu? Right. It's absolutely divine. You would join us for a bite to eat, won't you, Mikhail? Uh, I guess. Perfect. Let's set to work and hunt for those ingredients. All three of those things should be easy to come by around here. No need to travel off the beaten path. Right, so our first objective in the game is to get food for not only us, but our new guest, Mikhail, who, uh,. Yeah, it's been through some stuff, but uh... What you're looking at right now is a collection point! It's a point where you collect things! Hurr! So, in this game, yeah, to gather items, we visit these places called collection points. And in this update, they actually show exactly what we can find on them, which is pretty cool. So we got our uh, deviled onions taken care of. I reckon now we need some trout. Probably need to head to the collection point with a little fish on it. Makes sense, and uh... Yeah, you don't really need to travel too far. They made this super simple, and I, I really like this system. You know, just get Aren't your vegetables intrepid. near all the foliage. Makes sense. It's kind of nice, but uh, that being taken care of, we're pretty much good to go. We got all the ingredients we need to make up some food. And... Right, we've got our ingredients. Fire's nice and toasty. I think we're all set for the night. Jin, would you mind making a start on the cooking? I'll get right to it. Blades? Doing the cooking? Got a problem with that? <laughs> Chill out, Jin. Jin. Better Jin than me. If I were in charge, I'd probably end up losing a limb peeling the veggies. That's not all one-sided, though. Laura has her own talents, like making charms. That I could never do. Right. We make up for each other's strengths and weaknesses. Blade or driver, no one has to shoulder all the burden. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, sure. Okay, I'm gonna start on the trout strilu. It won't take long. Man, I'm getting hungry now, dude. I want to eat some of Jin's cooking. Oh, crap. I actually have some new uh, options. Speak with your allies and craft. All right, so why don't we talk a little bit while we're making our food? Sounds good to me. Kind of like to learn more about these two. And Laura, about that battle earlier. I know, right? <laughs> we were phenomenal. You're trying to do too much. Uh, what? I thought you were going to praise me. I'm only trying to draw out your full power, Jin. You know that. That's fine. And I appreciate it. What I'm saying is please don't put yourself at risk, Laura. Uh, we've been together a long time, haven't we, Jin? Ever since I touched your core crystal as a little girl, we became bonded forever as driver and blade. Yeah. It's a bond closer than blood, I think. 
That's part of the reason why I want to help you too. See you grow and be there for you. That's beautiful, Laura. But you're a driver and I'm a blade. Blades protect their drivers in a fight. It's the natural order of things. Especially since we don't need to worry about being wounded. As long as the core crystal stays intact. While I, on the other hand, am just a human. When a driver dies, their blade returns to their cores. That's why you want me to be more careful, right? Exactly. Hmm. Right, I get it. Well, it's not like I want to make you anxious in the middle of a fight. It's... Okay. I promise not to overdo it. And if things start looking bad, I'll be sure to switch out for you. Thanks. That'd be great. I'm counting on you, then. You know I'll never let you down. It's kind of nice. Mikhail's just like, Can you two please just make the food already? I'm starving! Alright, you go- <laughs> Here you have Laura. I'm gonna make some crafts! And Jin just- <sighs> Cooking! Power! Don't spoil your appetite before anyway. Done. That's kind of funny. Let's make our dish. Get some food. Head to bed. How sad. That village, I mean. It is. That blade, Malos. He didn't do that, did he? The towns raised by the Aegis were completely obliterated. I plan to inform the mercenaries of this. How could a person do something so awful? Anyway, you should rest now. We should be able to meet up with Hayes tomorrow. Oh, yes. I wonder if she's found any leads on Mother. I hope so, anyway. I'll prepare food, then rest up. Oh, that's kind of you. Thanks. I really hit the spot. No, I really can't think of anything better than why. Scrumptious. <laughs> you scarf that down quick. Uh. One second. <laughs> Aw, he's scared. Come on, Jin's a cool guy. Just. Nikhil, relax. He's not gonna bite you. Don't let the whole moody thing fool you. He's generally concerned about you. Moody thing? Look, there's anything you need. Just tell us, alright? Um, I'm fine. Really. Okay, I hear you. Listen, I know Jin can seem a bit... scary, but... he's really very gentle. You'll get used to him. Maybe. Uh... <laughs> Jin's like, I'm not that scared. I just need to clean up here, and then we can move out. Felt like can't be far now, can it? Where we're meeting up with Hayes. That's right. Still a way to go, but if we keep to the road, it won't take too long. Right, so I guess Jin and Laura just kind of trying to meet up with somebody else and happen to run into Mikhail on the way. But uh, the game's going to tell us, hey, campsites are dope. You should probably go to them. Also, pouch items are pretty handy. You can make those at campsites. You can also use bonus EXP, which holy crud. If you didn't know about that, this game's going to be god dang hard. You can do all that at campsites, but we'll become well acquainted. And speaking of pouch items, let's actually literally eat that food. You knew I'd like this, didn't you? <laughs> you knew I'd like my own cooking. Anyway, stinking. I just really like to hear the uh, pouch item sound effects, like, as soon as I can. I'm a really big fan of the voice acting in this game, and so far, my god, Laura's is amazing. She does a really good job. I'm digging that. And also, Treasure chest just laying out in the middle of nowhere. How about that crap? Uh, sometimes these will be locked, and you'll need specific field skills to unlock them. But this one's a freebie, so uh, hey, just take what's inside. 
Sadly, that is a gray rigid vest, and I already have the best one possible, which I should probably equip, because, yeah, that... Oh my gosh, that's a huge increase in HP. What the cr... Okay. Dang, I got pretty lucky. I hope that uh, continues throughout the playthrough, but, uh... Crud, I almost did not mention this. Uh, the game's gonna tell us this eventually, but I might as well point this out at the moment. You're seeing these things in the sky, and, uh... Well, here's the thing. We're actually on a giant dragon right now. Yeah, in case you didn't know. Uh, Torna is what's called a Titan Continent, and for the entirety of this game, we're gonna be on these giant beasts, but uh, I guess more on that later. For right now, we gotta learn about those field skills I was mentioning when we were opening up that chest. So, blades can interact in the open world, and in this specific scenario, Jin is gonna help us actually make a bridge with swift swordplay. Guess he's gonna like cut down the tree and <laughs> that was actually a really cool animation. <laughs> but I imagine just Jin is so fast, he did that in real time. He just cut it and then was just static. Like, hey, wanna see this me cut this tree? Addicted. Wanna see me do it again? <laughs> That's what I visualized in my mind. But uh here we are in the Horrid Hills where we're gonna learn about another game mechanic. How about that? So you've been targeting a lot of different enemies you'll soon encounter ones with a different icon. These are referred to as unique monsters, and they usually have very unique names. They can be very tricky to take down. However, if you do so, the benefits are gonna be very bountiful. Also, if you take one down, you can respawn it with its tombstone. Now I'll be straight up with you guys. Uh, Yeah, we ain't gonna fight that level 23 monster for quite some time. I like to focus on kind of the weaker ones. When we're starting out in the game, and that is a generally good idea. So, for the most part in this playthrough, we're not really gonna do any grinding on screen. Uh, I like to keep a bit of brevity with my playthroughs. I know there's a lot of grinding in RPGs, but don't worry, I'm not gonna make you guys sit through all that. However, I do wanna show something off in combat. So, Jin has this ability, Snow Blast, which does additional damage from the side. This is a positional ability, and I wanted to show that because these enemies, not super hard. They're gonna give us EXP though, which will help us take on stronger enemies. For the most part, you don't really need to grind too much in Xenoblade, however... Oh my gosh, I'm getting so... I'm getting so lucky with these drops, oh my gosh, but uh... It's a good idea to make sure you're not too low level compared to the enemies you're intending to fight. Usually, three levels is around the range you want to be in. Come to think of it, I think. <laughs> Why not? Let's go against that like rule that I literally just said and try and take down that like giant scorpion over there, scorpion-esque enemy. Because the Xenoblade names for common animals is radically different. But the Caliber Scorpox. Let's take him on. Cause I want a challenge. So uh, this is gonna be a little bit tricky. But for the most part, if we constantly switch between Jin and Laura and use both of their arts, we should be fine. So the first thing I'm gonna try and do here is do additional damage with Path of Thorns, and then if we can get Hungry Snakes to get the break, okay, we got it. Switch immediately to Jin, go to the side, and use Snow Blast to get the additional damage from that. We can't use the back attack uh, damage up because it just take way too long to get the back of this enemy in the short amount of time that he's toppled, and then we're gonna try and use uh, Jin's arts to build up our special. If we can get a level four, this thing is gonna explode. However, that's kind of asking a lot, but I think this next attack, yeah. We're gonna switch to her and... Now that we have max affinity, which is the gold bond between both of us, we can build up to a level four, and that's gonna do a fair amount of damage. So I really doubt it's gonna survive this, I mean this enemy, yeah, he's pretty much dead. Uh, if you use the break and topple effect with Laura and Jin, chances are most enemies at this stage of the game aren't gonna be too tough for you to take down, so just keep that in mind and you should be okay. But uh, we actually unlocked something on our affinity chart and this is gonna look really overwhelming, but trust me, it isn't. So here are our arts displayed in this menu, right? So. In this game, we can power up these arts, but the main way that you're gonna be increasing your character's power isn't through here. I mean, yeah, this is important, and you know, leveling up your arts is pretty handy. It's actually through our affinity charts. So, we get points after every time we defeat a foe. And for Laura, who is a driver, we're gonna get skill points. And these can be spent here to give us permanent stat increases. Now for Jin, who is a blade, 
His affinity chart is a little bit different because he's a completely different organism. So I feel my power surging. I do too, bro. Uh, <laughs> man, his voice actor is so cool. I said to take that in, but this is gonna look super overwhelming, but it really isn't. Basically, the green things are your field skills, the yellow things are your passives, and the red things are for your specials. These can be enhanced by doing a myriad of different tasks. So the mind's eye skill, which I really want to get, is defeats Arlo, Capiba, and the secluded Boneway in Torna. We're in Torna right now, so if we run into that enemy, we're getting a 20% increase to our stats if we can beat four of them, and then we check our affinity chart again. It might seem kind of complicated if this is your first time playing a Xenoblade game, but don't worry about it. This is actually super easy, so luck would have it. Ran into the first Arlo that we need to take down, so let's take Pretty straightforward battle. If you have two levels on your opponent, chances are you're gonna be okay in Torna. But uh, here we are on the secluded bone way, and if memory serves me right, there should be two more of these enemies that I want to knock out before we proceed onward. So, sorry guys, I gotta kill you. <laughs> and I think, yeah, they're not gonna respawn. Okay, so uh, here's a little trick for those playing at home. I'd feel really bad if you. Uh, didn't get access to Mind's Eye with Jin, but uh, if you just fast travel back to where you literally just were in the secluded bone way, all the enemies respawn. So that can be really handy if you need to kill a certain amount of foes, like we need to right now. I think with that, we should be just about done. Awesome! So, now we have access to Mind's Eye for Jin. I really, really want to specify that you want to knock out like affinity chart requirements such as Let's defeat X amount of foes in an area when you're in the area because you don't want to have to come back and do it later. But now Jin permanently has an increased crit chance for 20%. Pretty darn handy. So uh, just keep checking your blades affinity charts. Eventually you'll max them out. And once you do that, yeah, your blades are going to be doing a lot more damage. But here we are in the crop woods of Yorn. I'm almost at our destination. Kind of. You you'll see what I'm talking. Looks like Hayes isn't here yet. What the? This is, this should be the village of Feltley. It's almost like glass. Rumor among the mercs says that's the hallmark of the Aegis. But why would he do this? Look out! Okay, we went from fighting woodland creatures to a giant robot! But there's no way to proceed onward without taking this thing down. And this gargoyle with the halo is actually a pretty tough foe. He's level eight, gonna do a lot of damage if you're not prepared. So this is the game testing you straight off the bat. Hey, were you paying attention to the tutorials? Cause if you weren't, you're gonna be in a lot of pain. However, we totally were, and we know about break and topple. So we're gonna be able to do a ton of damage. Snow blast coming. I didn't get the positional attack. Apparently, I was not to its side. That is unlucky, but oh well, what can you do? Let's just... He's actually being pretty nice to me, all things considered. Sadly, our HP potion spawned behind the opponent, so it'd be really hard to go back there and get it, but we still have access to um our specials. Holy crud, all the animations look so awesome. Oh my gosh. For the opponent and Jin, like, he just summons all these, like, ice attack. He's so goddamn cool, but uh, it's really only a matter of time. Just keep switching between blade and driver. You should knock him down. When Laura switches to any of her blades, she actually heals a pretty considerable amount for the early game, so if you know about that, you keep picking up your HP potions, get the topple and the break when you can. It's only a matter of time before this gargoyle is destroyed.
This is no normal monster. Not an Ardanian Titan weapon, either. Maybe it's Malice's. Get down, you two! <sighs> Holy... That was a close one. Looks like Malos's artifices are still roaming around. So it was. Hey. Wait a minute. Emblem of Torna. You are Jin, right? Wow, I can't believe it. I came all the way out here, and who do I say but the paragon of Torna and his driver? <laughs> You're so young. That core crystal was stolen 17 years ago. Quite a feat to pull off that heist at that age. Are you going to arrest us? Execute us? I don't know yet. I did just save you after all. Oh, how magnanimous. Laura, there's no point in talking. Have it your way. Holy crap. Okay, here we go, guys. A battle against another blade and driver. So in this scenario, we definitely want to take down Mithra as fast as we can. Mithra is more or less a glass cannon, meaning she doesn't have a lot of HP, but her damage output is very severe. So as fast as we can, we want to try and get the break and the topple. We don't want to do the break too soon, though, if we don't have access to Jin, because that's going to be a really big waste. we got a big HP potion to spawn. Gonna get that right now. Let's try and use Snowblast. And she dodged it. God dang, Mithra apparently is very fast. That is an issue, but we'll still be okay. Our HP is looking good. Mithra's is not, and she's enraged, but... Wow, she's dropped like... <laughs> she dropped like a ton of bricks! That was faster than I thought, but... Now, all that's left is Adam. Who apparently is not as strong as Mithra. I'm just gonna say that straight off the bat. Wow. He is not that tough. Crud. I thought that'd be a little harder, man. He got my hopes up for nothing, but... Oh well, we did it. The hell are these two? They're just a driver and blade. Where's the strength coming from? Well, he is the paragon of Torna. Ah, I've had enough. What? No. There's no need for you to... <sighs> you! What? Incredible! You! Both of you! Huh? That last attack, the force behind it was absurd. I'm amazed! Oh, uh, really? Well, that's just... <laughs> oh, and passing the weapon. What a concept! How did you ever come up with that idea? Oh, well... We were broke. Huh? We couldn't afford meals, let alone another sword. And so we made do.
<laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> oh, man, you guys are the best. I haven't laughed this hard in ages. Huh? I really, really like you two. Um... Master Adam! Sir! Milton! Oh, thank goodness you're all right. Master Adam, are you hurt at all? Master Adam? You can't be THE Adam Origo. The Lord of Aletta. And fourth in line to the throne of Torna. Oh, come on, Milton. I've been with him the whole time. You really think these two would cause any harm? You've been using your dumb artifice again, haven't you? Dumb? So yeah, sure, nothing to worry about, right? <gasps> Milton? Who's this then? Ah, this is Hayes. She rescued me from the jaws of some nasty monsters. Well, I'd better give her my thanks. Hayes! Oh, was she with you? I'm sorry to keep you waiting, my lady. I see. So that's when... What a sad, sad tale, Nora. <laughs> Here we go again. Don't let it get cold now. So then, how come you've enlisted with a band of mercenaries? I guess I like the freedom. This way I'm not tied down. So I can help out. With causes I really believe in, you know? Going's tough everywhere you look these days, right? I can't ignore it, can I? I understand. A fat load of good that'll do. In the long run. The world keeps turning anyway. You might think that. But mercenaries and statesmen each have their own views and ways to affect change. It's not in vain. <laughs> A blade siding with humans. You don't see that every day. I think it's blades like you that are rare. Well, duh. You do know what I am, right? Lacking in compassion. Huh? Blades like you really are a rare sight. That may be for the best. <sighs> so, about Jin. I suppose you have to take him away from me. I could try to slay you right here. But? But my mission is to stop the Aegis's destruction. To subdue Malos, not to seek out lost trinkets. Who cares about paragons anyway? Huh? How about you two join up? Lend us your strength. You're incredibly powerful. There's loads I want to pick up from you, like that trick from before. Let's see. We'll say I found the paragon on my journey and decided to entrust him to you. To help with Malos. Well, sound plausible? That's just... Speak to me like that. 
He thinks he knows me. Of course is the word. Yeah, he is. I meant you. Me? He meant you're unpolished. After you return to your core, you lose your memories. However, as you gain experience with people, gradually the nature of a blade, rather their feelings, they change and grow. You become more and more human. But you purposely keep yourself apart. Oh, so now it's my fault? No, not at all. I respect that part of you. <laughs> hey, are you angry? About this whole Malos thing? I'm not. Whatever happens, I'll protect you. Be sure of it. We cannot simply ignore what's happening in the world. But... But what? Please say you'll be careful. <laughs> I will.